Hello and welcome to Unit 2 of this course, Spring Boot Quick Start. This unit is titled Spring MVC, The View Tier. In this unit, we're going to be adding some controllers and handling some requests that we get to our web application and uh, build some simple logic uh, so that we have a proper response for all those requests. We're going to be building the controllers and having files that uh, Java files that map requests to responses, but we're not going to be connecting to the database yet. We are just going to have these controllers ready so that later in the in a subsequent unit, we're going to be able to connect to the database and show live data. But for the sake of this unit, we're going to establish the mapping and use some hard-coded values and hard-coded data. All right, so what is the view tier in a Spring Boot application? Like I mentioned, the view tier is handled by a framework called Spring MVC, which is another project in the Spring framework umbrella. Spring MVC lets you build these controllers which map requests to responses. Think about what happened when we created our Spring Boot application. We had an app and uh, thanks to the Spring Web Starter dependency that we had in our Spring Boot application, we actually had Spring MVC added to our app. But when we first started the app, we didn't write any controllers. So when a request came in, when an input request came in, well, Spring MVC said, well, I don't know what to do, and it showed an error page, right? We did not have any controllers to handle the request. What you would typically do in a Spring MVC application is build these controllers so that you know that when a request comes in, you have a proper response. And the way a controller works is these controllers are simple Java classes which map a URI and an HTTP method to some functionality, right? So this controller is a simple Java class and it has some Java methods to handle requests and return responses. Now these methods are annotated with two pieces of information. One is a URI that this controller is gonna handle when there is a request coming in, and then the HTTP method that this controller method is gonna handle, right? So let's say there's a particular URI and there's a get request coming in. So you want a particular method to handle that request, then what you do is you write that method and then you put the right Spring MVC annotations that map that URI and that HTTP method so that this gets executed. Now what you do is you write a bunch of these controllers and deploy them in your Spring Boot application. Now when a request comes in, the Spring MVC framework is gonna look at the URI of that request and it's also gonna look at the HTTP method, right? It can be a post request to URL A, it can be a put request to URL B, a get request to URL C, whatever that is, right? It looks at those parameters and then it examines the list of controllers that it has in the class path and sees if any of these methods have the URI and the HTTP that maps the request that comes in. If there is a match, then it executes that method, and then whatever is the return type, it converts it to a proper response and then sends it back. Now, what do I mean by converting to a proper response? You remember when we wrote our first controller, when the topic controller uh, you know, was implemented in unit one, we returned a list of topic objects. We didn't really bother to convert it to JSON, but what Spring MVC did was it detected that this was a REST controller, so it knew that the response probably needs to be JSON. So it actually did the conversion for us, right? It has the libraries built in, which converts Java values to JSON. So it did the conversion automatically. So what you do is, and you return the value that you wanna send back as a response. You don't worry about converting to JSON, Spring MVC, handles that. So you write a bunch of these controllers. You can have multiple methods in the same controller class or you can have multiple controller classes. As long as you put it in the class path, Spring MVC is going to do a class path scan and have it ready and then it's going to return the response based on what the request is. Right? It makes a note of all the things that uh, it needs to handle and then it returns the right response depending on the right request. So this is what we're going to be doing in this unit. We're going to be writing a bunch of these controller classes to handle a bunch of requests. Now what are those requests that we're going to be handling in the course API? Let's look at that in the next tutorial.